Hey Rose, how are we doing? Doing good, how are you? I'm great, thanks for asking. Um, what's it like being back here? Does New York and this fighting at MSG, does this hold a special place in your heart at all? Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool to be back here. Uh, New York has grown on me the, the more that I get to know it, and it's an amazing city. Yeah, and I mean, this one in particular, you got the two teammates on the card. It's the, uh, you know, the show for all you guys. So what's it been like throughout this camp and just the, the vibes coming into this week? Um, the vibes. Uh, the vibes are good, man. Uh, really prepared. And I, I don't know, we're just like on point with everything. And you've been in this scenario before, you know, the rematch and everything like that right away after a quick win. Um, how much were you able to take away from the situation with the Joanna fights and apply them to this? Oh, with my other rematches, how I apply to this? Yeah. Um, with all my rematches, I always, uh, I try to take into consideration a little bit as far as like how can the other person be different, what I learned from the first fight. But ultimately, um, that's, you know, just a portion of it. My, the majority of what I go into a rematch with is just, uh, it's a brand new fight. And I just have to uh, be the best version of myself no matter what because, um, you know, anything is possible, anything can happen, so I had to be ready for everything. And you put her away quickly last time, and, you know, she kind of can justify it as I got caught perhaps, but you see these radical changes she makes. She shifts her training camp, has all these new people around her. So does that show you that maybe... Um, you know, it's not a sign of just, I got lost. She obviously felt that some dramatic adjustments were needed. Um, uh, what was the last part you said? Uh, it was a sign of what? That maybe she knew what she had going into that first fight wasn't enough. Because if she just felt it was oh. a situation, I just got caught. Maybe they she just do the same thing, changes. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Um, uh, I would think that no matter what actually happened with her, that she has to do something different or, you know what I mean? Like... You didn't get the outcome you wanted. You kind of have to change it up, I guess. Um, but uh, I'm just concerned with being the best version of myself. So, you know, regardless of what she's doing, um, I don't got to put any meaning to that. I just got to put meaning to my own life. And to you, to go in and win a fight like you did last time so quickly, so cleanly, um, what do you take away from that in terms of adjustments you need to make? Uh, put it, yeah. So, um Adjustments, I guess I'm always adjusting, you know, little things. Um, but overall, I'm just adding adding more, you know. Um, adding more skills to my arsenal um, and just getting better at the ones that I do better. And obviously, uh, you know, you had the title reign before. You made the history of being the first two-time female champion. What's your goals for this reign? I'm sure you just want to focus on the fight, take it one at a time. But do you allow yourself to think long term? Um, I guess it's fun to, like, entertain those thoughts and possibly. But, you know, one day at a time just because, like, not only, not only I have a huge fight in front of me, but, I mean, COVID and all this stuff, like the world is crazy. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? So I just, uh, I really just take one day at a time. And last thing for me, I asked a similar question to Kamaro about Colby, but do you look forward to this chapter in your career being over to get, you know, 2 no, usually there's not a third fight and you can have her behind her, but behind you and move on to different things. Is that something you're excited for? Um, no, I'm excited for a uh, Saturday night, you know, uh, I I really appreciate Whaley as a champ or as a as a I guess as a former champion as a as a um, a formidable opponent. Um, she brings a lot to the table that keeps me on my toes, and I'm really looking forward to it. And actually, one more: What does Saturday look like for you guys? Like, obviously, Trevor's going to be out there with Justin before you. Um, does he just hang out back there? I mean, does it change how you warm up, how you prepare, doing these back to back to back? What does that look like? Um. I think that, well, you know, uh, back in Florida, we had uh, Kamaro on the, actually Kamaro and I fought on, on two cards together. So it's just kind of a, the next level of that. Um, I, you know, rely a lot on Pat um, and he'll be holding Pat's for me and he'll be, and then Chico will be moving around with him and then um, be moving around with Trevor when I can and, and uh, we'll figure it out. 
Rose, right here. Uh, your last fight against Whaley wasn't that long ago. She's essentially just uprooted her whole life, moved to Arizona to rework her game. How much of an improvement can you make facing the same opponent in, in such a short amount of time? I believe you can make a lot of improvements when you are focused on, uh, you know, strengthening all of the weaknesses that you have when you're just focused on the present moment and, you know, just realizing what's at stake and it's my happiness, health and safety. So I have to put that first. And regardless of what happened in the past, I have to always be improving. Rose, to your left over here. Uh, it might seem very obvious, and because of that, are you expecting Whaley to come at you with a wrestling-heavy game plan in this one, or because of how obvious it is, maybe, try not to think about that? <laughs> um, uh, so can you say the question one more time? Do you think it'll be, is it expected from you that she'll uh, attack with her wrestling because she's been training with Henry and everything like that? Um, I think that, you know, what's, what to expect is that her wrestling has gotten better. What, how will that translate in the fight? Who knows? Um, I just have to be um, open for for everything. So, um, yeah, but I've improved on my wrestling as well and my grappling. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for all that. When you studied her the first time, did you kind of find her grappling to be a little bit underrated? Because if you look at her like whole career before the UFC, she grappled a lot, actually, and took a lot of opponents down and beat yeah. them there. Is that something you noticed ahead of time? Oh, no, I, um, you know, regardless of what I guess the the rest of the world thinks I've I've studied Whaley up and down left and right and I've always respected her grappling. Um, she has a lot of submission wins and you know I've also observed when she when she gets in fights that um, if she's uh, losing the striking battle she'll she'll kind of force the the clinch or force a, a grappling exchange. So um, that is I guess uh, you know that's that's not a surprise to me. Uh, and in the past, you've kind of spoken about the championship pressures being, you know, a little heavy at times. How are we feeling now? Are those gone since you've been here, done that, or are they still always going to be there? Um, yeah, I think uh, I'm definitely a lot more grateful <laughs> for just everything, like not just the belt, but just just being here, uh, being able to walk, breathe, uh, be with you guys. Like it's um, uh, just a lot more grateful. So, yeah, I mean, it... it is it hard? Yes. Like, don't get me wrong, but uh, I'm just a lot more grateful. Best of luck, Rose. Thank you. Hey, Rose, I want to ask you about a bit of the coaching challenge because her, you know, her team also now includes Eric Albarsin, and he's obviously got Wei Li, but he's also got a belt going in Bellator. And he was saying it's like, you know, it's a competition, him and Trevor Whitman, because obviously Trevor's got the two titles this Saturday. Do you? Who said that? Coach Eric Alberici with Wei Lee, Henry's oh, old coach. Okay. Do you feel a bit of that in, in the, sometimes the coaching? Do you feel like sometimes they like to outdo their tactics? Do you feel like the coaches ever get competitive on that side, on the cerebral side? Um, I think, you know, that can, that can happen. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's comparing apples to oranges, in my opinion. But, like... Um, I mean, I guess it's natural for all of us to go to war, you know, not just just the fighter. So um, I, I think it's um, I think it's normal, you know. I also want to ask you a little bit about all the other going ons in the strawweight division. Marina Rodriguez, great performance against uh, Mackenzie. Just when you're in this position, how much are you still paying attention to the girls coming up? Because you're obviously focused on Wei Lee, but there's a couple players obviously in the mix now. Yeah, I uh, watched that fight. I used it as like inspiration and motivation because that was a really action-packed fight. That was super exciting. Um, it really got me pumped up to just go out there and perform myself. So, um, you know, hats off to the, both of those ladies. It was really exciting. And then being in New York, obviously the site of, you know, your two wins over Joanna. There's a lot of talk about, you know, what's going on with negotiations and all that. Do you see her coming back to the title picture if and when she does compete again? Um, I mean, yeah, uh, Joanna and I have, have had our rivalry and stuff, but uh, I'm a huge fan of hers, so I, I would hope, you know, maybe one day that happens. But if not, I, I, 
I ultimately believe she's gonna do what's best for her in her life. So yeah, but I, I'm always a uh, I'm always gonna be excited to you know watch her fight or fight her myself. <laughs> I asked you guys this uh, back in Jacksonville, and I'd just like to ask you ahead of time. You, Kamaru, and Justin win. Whose after party does Trevor Whitman go to? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I'm always low key, so I would, and, and I feel like Trevor's pretty low key as well. So I guess, uh, you know, I, if, he probably going to be tired. He probably might just go to his room and, and pass out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Rose over here on your right. Yeah. You've previously stated that you thought that earning the belt was the ultimate goal, and once you won it the first time around, you'd felt like you made it. <laughs> now that you no longer stand by that, what is the pinnacle that you're striving for in your career? Um, to just live every day to the fullest, you know? Uh, if the belt comes along with that, great. And if not, then I'm going to be gardening or farming, you know? <laughs> so it's really just enjoying every moment and... Um, and doing the best that I can with what I got where I'm at. So is it fair to say that you're more process oriented now than maybe goal oriented like in the past? You 100%, yeah. All right, yeah. thanks Rose. Thank you. Hi Rose. Um, hey. So before the um, fight announcement with you and Whaley, um, people were guessing that you might have other choices for your opponent. Was that true that you pick among all the opponent um, to Whaley? I'm sorry, uh, if, if it, it was, what was true? Uh, it, was it true like um, UFC offered you other opponents for your fight, but you choose um, Amang Wei Li? No, that wasn't true. Actually, mm -hmm. like originally, I, I thought I was going to be facing Carly as soon as I uh, saw her fight. Mm -hmm. And then um, the UFC uh, would have rather me fight Wei Li. So, you know, I'm, I'm here to defend my belt, not pick my fights. Uh -huh. And you have a famous quote saying that I am the best. <laughs> and then, um, so who else in this division you think it's the other best maybe? Like you can fight next time yeah um when i when i first like think about it nobody like necessarily comes to mind but uh as long as if, if i don't do my best then then anybody could be the best you know so uh it really could be anybody but i truly believe in my heart that i am the best when i do my best all right um and last time Lady was saying that uh she fight more for like friendship um, so this time, would you agree that you guys are fighting more like friendship and atmosphere? Oh, sorry, what was the last part? Um, I mean, I'm asking you, like, if this time you think you guys ag you agreeing with her, like you guys fight more for like friendship atmosphere this time? Okay, so um, I think where, I, I think friendship is always possible. Um, I'm always open to that. My approach to fighting is slightly different. I fight... Um, I fight uh, to for different purposes. I come here to you know protect myself at all times, and you know be the best that I can be. And then throughout that process is when I have made you know the closest friendships that I ever had. Obviously, I met my you know uh, fiance Pat Berry through martial arts. Um, the closest friends uh, you know Trevor Whitman, Chico, all my corners and teammates and and family and all that stuff. Um, whereas. I think what she was saying is, you know, she does martial arts to make friends. Um, mm -hmm. To me, it's it's just a little different. It's more self-defense, in my opinion. But I'm open to the possibility to, um, if it's genuine and sincere and honest, I'm the easiest person to get along with. Thank you. Uh, Rose, over here. Um, over here, back. Oh. If, so if with such a mega venue like Madison Square Garden, sold out fans, what do you do to calm the nerves? And do you still get butterflies um, with all eyes on you as a co-main event? What do you do to calm those nerves? Ooh, cry a lot. <laughs> nah, uh, I just um, breathe and pray and just believe and trust and have faith in my preparation, and my higher power, and, and just do the best that I can. So, But you're going to feel them, and you're, you're going to have to just go through it. And if there's one advantage that you could say, if any, uh, that Whaley would have over you, what would that be? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to get back to you on that one. All right, thank you. Thank you.
Rose, I just had one more to your left. Uh, you yeah. mentioned, you know, expecting Carla after, you know, the last victory. Was it kind of a bummer for you to get Whaley instead? Because I'm sure you want to get that Carla one back. The story's so great, going from tough 20, and now you're the champion. Is it a little bit disappointing in that aspect? <laughs> I mean, at first I was, and then I, like, you know, put up, put on my grown-up pants, and then was like, all right, let me look at this the objective way as possible. And I realized that Whaley is the most dangerous opponent I could face right now. Um, the tools that she possesses, I really have to be on my game. So, um, but yes, I mean, it, like, I would love to, to fight Carla, and I think that, you know, she did a lot to deserve that. But at the same time, uh, Whaley, Whaley did too. And so um, I just had to be ready for a fight no matter what. So, um, and then, you know, turns out, I guess, you know, a lot of people think that she might be wrestling more. So maybe I, I'll, I'll get a, you know, similar type of a fight. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you.